Another shocking indictment about how President Obama views the military. It was this absence of passion, this absence of a conviction of the importance of success that, that disturbed me. More from President Obama's former Secretary of Defense, Robert Gates, coming up. Nice hat. And welcome aboard live from Studio E here in Midtown Manhattan. Just about 280 miles south of us is where Brett Baer has set up his command post. He's been uh, the host of Special Report for the last five years, and we gave him a shout out last week when he joined us on Monday. Brett, where was he born, Steve? Where was, uh, Brett, where was Baer? Brett Baer born? Do we even? Uh, he was born in a laboratory. He's he was uh, developing <laughs> he's a test tube baby. baby. He's the perfect. That's exactly he's the right. perfect newsman. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I agree with that. He was New Jersey design. actually. Born in New Jersey. Really? Red Bank, wow. New Jersey. Wow. Has there been any nice. news coming out of New Jersey lately? Really, not much. That's right. Can't even. <laughs> So Very connected up there. Well, well, first I was there up, the zero to ten. I still have all my contacts. You do. Listen, hey, listen, Brett. Uh, it's hard to know what book to read and what not to read. But let's start with uh, the Secretary of Defense Gates's book. That's out. We only probably have seen about sixty pages of it, and there's six hundred in it. Uh, listen to this soundbite and tell me about the impact you think it has on President Obama. One thing to tell the troops that you support them. It's another to, to work at making them believe that you believe, as president, that their sacrifice is worth it, that the cause is just, that what they are doing is important for the country, and that they must succeed. President Bush did that with the troops uh, when I was secretary. I did not see President Obama do that, and I said, and as I write in the book, it was this absence of passion, this absence of a conviction of the importance of success that, that disturbed me. Your reaction to, you think, the ramifications of that statement in the book? Well, I think it, it is detrimental, obviously, to the administration, to President Obama. Um, but, you know, Secretary Gates is out uh, giving another interview this morning in which he says that uh, people can read the book through their own political prism and all, all sides are looking at it one way or another. I think he's trying to have it all ways in these interviews. That particular soundbite, however, is pretty damning to what the president didn't do, and that is sell the war strategy and support the troops by speaking about it. I mean, you, we've talked about that many times on the show, that after the surge, and he announced the surge at West Point, even though it had a date of withdrawal tied to it, he, he really didn't talk about Afghanistan that much at all. In fact, the next uh, speech, he did one other speech and then started talking about the drawdown. Uh, that is not exactly the same as supporting the strategy and, sure. and making sure the, the country is on board. Sure. Do you, I mean, there are many that will, that would think the timing of this is important. You know, for some it's too late, for others it's too early. Um, it seems as though the motive here is to do something, if he couldn't do it from within, to do it um, from wherever he is now. Send a message that this sort of way of governing and leadership um, isn't going to work for the next three years. Do you, is that the pulse there? Yeah, I mean, why he's doing it, I, I tell you, it's, it's an interesting question, why Gates is coming out at this time. Obviously, Afghanistan policy is in flux. Uh, there is this deal that is kind of still teetering with Hamid Karzai, whether U.S. troops are going to actually be on the ground going forward, and if there are enough of them to protect themselves and to ha help the Afghans. And uh, right now, that hangs in the balance. Could that be a reason why Gates is out with this book now, or does it all have to do with profit margin and, and sure. money as well. Uh, those are all questions that I think critics say uh, this book, you know, maybe shouldn't be out at this time, but he's obviously raising a lot of questions. Absolutely. Uh, I, I thought the interview on CBS with Rita Braver was terrific. One thing she didn't ask about was the uh, the soundbite from the book that where Hillary and the president both decided they were opposed to the surge because of uh, political reasons. Uh, he did, however, uh, say that uh, he thought that Hillary Clinton would be a strong president, make a good president because she's so tough. What's interesting this morning, that's not the headline about Hillary. Politico, that uh, lefty blog uh, situated out in Virginia, they've got a, 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 the Hillary hit list. And what's interesting, after 
she had already conceded that Barack Obama was going to be the nominee. Uh, her staff put together a list, including John Kerry, uh, then just Massachusetts Senator uh, Jay Rockefeller, Pat Casey, Patrick Leahy as well, and it goes on, including uh, Claire McCaskill, of, of people who had just so crossed the line, uh, they would never forgive them. Tell us about what uh, Politico is writing this morning. I mean, it's pretty detailed, is this, uh, they, this list that they have. I mean, during the election, obviously, each, of, each lawmaker was given, according to this report, a number, one through seven, whether they were helpful or unhelpful uh, to the Clintons in some way, shape, or form. And it was kept on this giant database. And after uh, Hillary Clinton pulled herself out of that uh, election, even as, as you're heading towards the convention, they're having private conversations about if it comes down to the convention, are you going to support me? After that, that list continues, according to this article, and uh, it continues to this day. Now, friends are quoted as saying this is a favor file and that the Clintons, uh, you know, run across so many politicians they need to know who to go support X, Y, Z. Uh, critics would say this, this lines up like, uh, you know, an enemies yeah. list. Hey, you know, I feel the same way. If I had me or my... Uh if Bill Clinton or Hillary Clinton was out there raising money for these people, help putting them in office, then you ask for some help, and they go, no, I'm going to go with the younger guy. That must tick her off, so they wrote it down. Also in that book, I was fascinated to see that Casey said that she was kept on a tight leash as Secretary of State and given an assistant that often would go on the other side of her on issues as a reflection inside the White House. So why she even kept that job for four years doesn't seem to make any sense. There's another story ready to erupt, I, I, I feel. I think there is. And, and, you know, listen, we have a long time to go before you get to what, what is expected to be a 2016 run for Hillary Clinton. And I think these kinds of stories, deep in detail, uh, will, will continue to come out. I think the Claire McCaskill story is pretty interesting. In 2006, she's asked whether Bill Clinton is a good leader. And he, she says, yes, he's a good leader, uh, but, quote, I don't want my daughter near him. Whoa. And she says that in an interview and eventually uh, tearfully apologizes according to this, to the Clintons. Um, it's notable that she is out supporting Hillary Clinton, one of the first senators to do right. so for 2016. Right. In the political item, she also says that uh, because she was supporting Obama, the last person she wanted to be caught in an elevator with was Claire McCaskill. Hey, George Stephanopoulos right. destroyed the Clintons in his book, and they're still on speaking terms, while he was in office. They seem to be. Yeah. Right? All right, That's Brett, true. We're going to be watching you on the Fox News Channel 10 hours from right now. Okay, sure it's a date. All right. Have a good day. Thank Bye, you. Brett.